These are the best ways to get shiny Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Hey yo, it's your boy Mitch Bordo, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to go over all the methods to get shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Side note that all these methods, except for breeding, are best when using sparkling power from sandwiches. Also, when doing any shiny hunting whatsoever, I highly suggest turning off autosave. Whenever you find a shiny Pokemon, you can manually save in front of it. That way, if you knock it out, you can reset and it'll still be there. Now, let's get to it. Returning from Legends Arceus, we have Mass Outbreaks. Mass Outbreaks appear on a certain point of the map and have a single species of Pokemon spawn 60 times in a small portion of an area. For example, here we have a Noibat Mass Outbreak. We're going to manually save and get our Dragon Sparkling Power. Noibat is only going to spawn 60 times, so if you don't get a Shiny after defeating 60 of them, just reset and try again. Now, using the Let's Go method is a lifesaver here because it saves so much time and your Pokemon will not attack a Shiny using Let's Go. So if you're looking for a shiny Pokemon and it doesn't have like an apparent shiny and your Pokemon using Let's Go isn't attacking it, you might want to take a closer look. Your odds of mass outbreaks are going to be 1 in 1,365 base, 1 in 819 with shiny charm, 1 in 683 with just sparkling power, 512 with both shiny charm and sparkling power level 3. Oh, there he is, baby. Yeah, shiny Noibat, let's go. The next method is breeding. Now I'm working on a more in-depth guide to breeding in general, so whenever that's done, I'll have it like in the corner somewhere, or you can just subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Please. For the sake of this video, we're just going to focus on breeding for shinies. Now you can't talk about breeding for shinies without talking about the Masuda method. The original Diamond and Pearl introduced a method known as the Masuda method, which was named after the composer slash director slash my lord and savior, Junichi Masuda. Pretty much how it works is you'll have increased shiny odds from eggs if you have both parents being from different languages. So, for instance, if one parent is English and the other is Japanese, you'll have increased shiny odds. I think, single-handedly, the best way to get foreign Pokemon is definitely a surprise trade. Pretty much in no time, I got Japanese versions of, like, every starter, so it's actually pretty easy. The easiest way to Masuda method, in my opinion, is just take a ditto from your game, so mine would be an English ditto, and then mate it with whatever Pokemon you want to breed. From a different language so so for instance here i have an english ditto and i'm making it with a japanese score bunny and because my score bunny is japanese and my ditto is english i'll have increased shiny odds now the fastest way to get eggs is to use a sandwich with egg power all meal powers last 30 minutes so with egg power you'll rack them up pretty quick the basket can only hold 10 eggs at a time so make sure you're checking it periodically for this clip i used the ultra peanut butter sandwich which grants you egg power level 2 which gave me 10 eggs every five minutes. So they last for 30 minutes. So every five minutes, six times. So in theory, you'll get 60 eggs every 30 minutes. To speed up the time that it takes to hatch eggs, put a Pokemon in your party that has the ability Flame Body, Steam Engine, or Magma Armor. Now these abilities don't stack, so just one will do. Odds are one in 4,096 base, one in 2,048 with Shiny Charm, one in 683 with Masuda Method, and one in 512 with Shiny Charm and Masuda Method. Oh my god, finally. <laughs> now the next method that we have is just using sparkling power and finding your desired Pokemon out in the wild. If you want to have an easier time, try pairing the sparkling power with encounter power of the same type. For example, in this clip, I used encounter power dragon and sparkling power dragon and found shiny gibble in like 10 minutes and at this point I didn't even have the shiny charm yet. Shiny odds for this method would be 1 in 4096 base, 1 in 2048 with shiny charm, 1 in 1024 with Sparkling Power level 3, and 1 in 683 with both Shiny Charm and Sparkling Power level 3. The sandwich that I used to get Noibat, I also used to get Gibble. Again, that consists of 1 Cucumber, 1 Pickle, 3 Avocado, and 2 of any of Mystica. Isolated Encounters! Coined by Austin John Plays, this method is probably the most effective and least time consuming way to get a shiny. How it works is you find an area where a single Pokemon is the only one of that type that spawns in that area. So if you're looking for a water type, go to an area where only one water type spawns. To get the best results, you're going to need encounter power of the type of Pokemon that you're trying to shiny hunt. This will replace some or most of the spawns in that area with the Pokemon you're trying to shiny hunt since it's the only one of that type to spawn in that area. To get even better results, shoot for encounter power level 2 or even level 3 and pair it with the appropriate sparkling power. The sandwich that I use for this includes one cucumber, one pickle, three bacon, two of any herb mystica. CBK Zip has a great spreadsheet of all the Pokemon that you can shiny hunt using this method. I'll leave a link to that in the description. <gasps> there he is! Get away from me! Get away from me! There he is! There he is! Yo, this is one of my most sought after shinies. 
Critical catch. Let's go. Let's go! If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a like. It'll help appease the almighty YouTube algorithmic gods. They're watching. I'm also trying to get the channel to 500 subscribers, so hit that sub button for more Pokemon fun. That's all I got for you today, guys. See you next time. Peace.